Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today we're gonna make these very frugal and spooktacular Halloween decorations, and we're using supplies from the Dollar Tree. I'm starting off with this skeleton. It was from the Halloween section in Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna begin by removing all of the rings off of the skeleton. I loved how it all articulates and all the legs and everything and arms move, uh, but taking off those rings before you start to paint is going to make this process so much faster and neater. So take that extra minute and a half, I know, isn't it? You just wanna jump in there and paint, don't you? But take the extra minute and a half and remove the rings. And I also recommend removing the jute hanging cord from any of the decorations. Now, if spookiness is not your cup of tea, they also have a bunch of uh, Thanksgiving themed wooden shapes. And I think they have some Christmas ones too. So you can definitely um, kind of use the ideas from this project and make it fit whatever you prefer. And I put some acrylic paint here on my Stay Wet palette. This is one by Redgrass Games. I'm trying it out. I'll be reviewing it eventually, but I like it so far. And and it kept my paint wet overnight when I was working on this and I forgot to put the lid on it so it even kept the paint um, moist while <laughs> the lid was off because it has a sponge underneath that uh, has water in it that keeps your palette wet so it's really handy if you like to use acrylic paints. And the acrylic paints I'm using are from Artify. I will link those down below. Um, you can use whatever you have and even the Dollar Tree sells acrylic paint so I, I think for this project it really doesn't matter. I will say this paint works really well with one coat so if you have a cheaper acrylic paint sometimes a bottled acrylic paint will require a couple of coats, but um, you'll know when you paint it whether it needs that or not. Of course, when we're doing these uh, like skeleton pieces, it's a uh, light tan balsa wood. So even if your paint wasn't great coverage, I don't think it would really show that much. Now I'm using a liner brush to just draw some little cracks in the bones just to make it look really vintage and old. If you don't have a liner brush, you can go out in your yard and find a feather and um, wet the feather, then dip it in the paint and that will work really well too. Now this is a sea sponge. I swear I've had this sea sponge since I was in high school. Um, when I took a toll painting class, it, I, as long as you wet them and wring them out before you load them up with acrylic paint, and I use them for watercolors too, uh, they shouldn't get ruined. And then rinse them out really good, wash them. I use a little just soap and water and I wash them when I'm done and rinse them really good and they will last for years to come. So um, buy it once friends and take care of it. Uh, I'm going in and I'm sponging around the edges and that's just giving the, um, the skeleton a little bit of depth and you can add a little bit of texture and interest. So it looks kind of like kind of rotted old bones. Uh, that's the look I'm going for, friends. <laughs> Rotted old bones, because it's spooky season and we want it to look nice and old and gnarly. Now, I'm going to do the same technique here for the face on this um, skeleton lady bust here, this kind of cameo type, type design. And um, I'm just using a big bristle paintbrush to dab on the colors. So it doesn't really matter. You can use a sponge to do this. You can use a bristle paintbrush. You could wad up a uh, paper towel. You could use cosmetic wedges, whatever you have, guys. You don't need to go. I, I really don't think that most people, most crafters would have to buy anything other than the wooden plaques for this. Um, use what you have, guys, okay? And now I'm using uh, that same liner brush. I'm doing the cracks in the, uh, in the bone again because I love that texture and technique. I just think it looks a little more authentic and a little more spooky. So have fun with it. If you don't want to do this, um, this step, you don't have to. And if you're doing this with kids, it might be a bit much to ask for a young kid to get those little details in there. I honestly think it's going to look cute no matter what. Now for the roses in the skull lady's hair, I am going ahead and just painting it in with red. And I'm also doing the frame with red because I intend to gold leaf it later. And if you have ever gold leaf to be for having red underneath looks really pretty. So um, that's my intent with this. And I actually switched to a cosmetic red wedge to sponge on the um, the red paint on the, on the frame because it was a lot quicker and I got better coverage that way. But I did go in with a brush just to make sure I had nice clean edges on the flowers. You can kind of see there loading up that sponge. Now here's a tip when you use those cosmetic wedges, you can clean them out and use them over and over again. But if say you forget and the paint dries in the bottom of the wedge like that, take a pair of scissors and just snip off the dried paint and keep on using it. So, I mean, I will use these cosmetic wedges until they are just little nubs. Um, I get those at the Dollar Tree too. They're in the makeup section. And I think it's like a pack of, I don't know, it's a pretty big, um, you get a pretty big amount for a dollar. I don't know if it's 20 or 50 or what. I'm so bad. At it. It's gotta be more than 20. It's like a big, it's a big like brick of them and you pull them apart. I don't know, but you get a lot for a buck. And uh, I just try to be mindful of them because they are like a, a foamy material. So I'm sure they don't break down very well. So, hey, you bought them, you might as well make them last. Um, I, they work really well for this sort of, uh, for this sort of application. Now I, she does have hair, so I'm just painting it brown and I'm um, just gonna let that dry before I go on to the next step. 
Now on our Franken face here, we are, yes, I know it's Frankenstein's monster. It's not Frankenstein. Oh my word. Every time I say, look at the Frankenstein, it's mo it's Frankenstein's monster, you know. Yes, I know. I, goodness, I just forgot, okay? I'm not that book smart. <laughs> I'm not that learned, guys. Um, and I'm using a sponge. I'm sponging on um, like a, a peach tone, a seafoam green, a kind of army green, like an olivey color, some gray, just trying to get that all over kind of dead ghoul corpse flesh color. And now I'm taking some purple. I've got kind of like a, um, oh, it's kind of like a mid lilac color, I'd say. And I'm sponging that under the eyes to give it kind of that like hollowed, uh, sickly, sleep deprived look and I'm also going just above the eye too because I want to make the look of like a brow bone so I went in with some of the olive green as well and added that for shading so I could get a little bit of um depth so I could get cheekbones so I could get the the brow and the shape of the face a little bit because um the Frankenstein looks a little cartoony and happy when you first get it, and you can totally paint it that way, and I would recommend that if you're painting this with children, but if you're a grown-up and you like spooky things like I do, then um, you can go in and do the contouring and get them looking nice and nice and spooky. And there you can see one of my, um, <laughs> my chopped down cosmetic wedges there. See, just chop off the dried paint if you let it dry and keep on trucking, or be a good human and wash them out <laughs> before they dry, which I have a I have a problem. I have a problem remembering to wash my sponges. I think they just blend in with my palette too much when I have all those colors down there. I'm going to use silver paint here for the bolts on the side of the head. And um, if you want, I was looking at a photo of the Universal Monster, and they actually had like a had like a piece of metal on his forehead, and I did that on one side of the. Um, of the face and not on the other. Oh, by the way, I'm painting both sides of these because um, these can hang in your window and can be viewed from like outside and inside, or you could hang them from the ceiling and see them on both sides. So um, I recommend painting both sides of them. And that way you can, you have two shots, right? You have two shots of getting a good <laughs> good job and you can show the, uh, the best side can face out or the best side can face the more important way, I guess. <laughs> I'm um, just putting a little bit of red paint on my finger and just kind of like putting it on the inside of the mouth and on the inside of the eyes just to kind of give it like a bloodshot look. And then I'm using my sponge here to just kind of uh, get the edges of the stitching on Frankie's head and um, kind of smear it around a little bit. So it looks like, you know, fresh stitches that are still a little oozy. Ah, <laughs> boy, the close captioning on YouTube is going to have a ball with this video. Uh, I'm going in and putting in the hair now, and I'm just starting by taking black acrylic paint and painting that across the top. And I just want to get that nice uh, full coverage at the top. And then I'm using a wisp brush, which is a brush that has um, at different heights of bristles. So you can do hair really easily. This is by Royal and Lightnickel in their Zen All Media range. I love the Zen and Menta All Media brushes. They're like a couple bucks a piece and they're really well made. I've never had any hairs shed and they last really long as long as you are make, make sure you're on the ball and you wash your brushes. So luckily I don't forget my brushes um, in an unwashed state. And the thing I like about the Zens and the Mentas is the pla the handles are plastic, so you can let them sit in the jar of water. If you forget them overnight in the jar of water, the, bris the bristle, ah, what, am I, what do I want to say, the uh, handle won't swell and crack like wooden handled brushes will. So if you are at all forgetful, I highly recommend getting brushes with acrylic or plastic handles because they will survive your um, shoddy, <laughs> your shoddy studio hygiene skills. Um, so those are a great, great bet and they're so affordable. Now for this one here, I thought this was really cute. And um, I'm just going in first painting all the pumpkins, a nice bright orange. And um, I wanted to have them kind of bright and have the coffin black around them. I also wanted to have a little detail over the orange. I'm using kind of like a... Oh, it's almost like a maroony, maroony, brownish, rusty color. And I am just painting in the, um, oh, kind of like, you know, the ribs of the pumpkin, just to give it a little bit of dimension. Now, I got to tell you something here. I, I painted this side thinking, oh, this is going to be the pretty side. I want to put vellum on the back. So I'll just do this side really nice. And the other side I'll do just kind of sloppy. And I stuck the vellum down on the wrong side. Oh, my word. I was so frustrated. <laughs> I had to repaint the other side. But I just wanted to say that because, um, you know, we all make mistakes. And don't get frustrated, you know, laugh about it and keep on painting because <laughs> it happens to the best of us friends. So I'm just using those same Zen brushes 
to put a nice um, a nice coat of black on the outside. Like I mentioned, this paint coat covers really well in one coat, but if you have a thinner paint and you need to do a couple of coats, you can do that too. Oh, also, if you're doing this project with kids and you wanna use tempera paint, tempera paint will work fine. You just may need another coat of it. Um, and the only other thing with tempera paint, I would say if you're gonna do tempera paint, then I would spray these when you're, I would have you do this, not the kids, but after the kids are done painting, spray it with a, um, either an oil base or a water base sealer uh, because your temper paint's not waterproof. If you touch those with wet hands or you hung them outside and they got water on them, um, they would, the, the paint would come off. So here I'm using glue stick all over the wrong side. But anyway, I'm using glue stick all over this so I can glue some vellum down onto the back. Now I thought about tissue paper, but um, I know vellum would be a little bit stronger since it is kind of a plastic paper. And I'm using glue stick because wet glue makes vellum buckle. So I just used a a permanent glue stick by Scotch. Um, any high quality glue stick will work good, but I would recommend that you do use a permanent version or you could even use double-sided tape if you want. But I was hoping that when I stuck that down really well, that's a sloppy side. See that I had to repaint that. Um, but uh, if you use the, um, the glue stick, it will keep it from, it'll, it'll be a little more uniform all over it, uh, I guess. That's what, that was what I was thinking. All right, now we're back to this lady here and we're gonna do some uh, gold leafing. So here I am using some gold leaf adhesive. So basically what this is, is a repositionable glue, kind of like Aliens Tack It Over and Over Again or Tombow Mono, any of those glues that dry sticky, they'll like go from a milky white to a clear and they'll be kind of tacky, like you might use them for repositioning your, um, your dye cut mats or whatnot. I didn't put enough down though. It said use a really thin coat and I used too thin of a coat. So I'm going to say go ahead and be a little generous with that. And honestly, I think my Aliens Tack It Over works better than this. But since I had it, I wanted to use it. And I haven't used Gold Leaf in a dog's age. So, um, you know, I'm definitely not the... Uh, uh, not the pinnacle of gold leaf instruction on YouTube. I would definitely uh, refer to someone more experienced than I am. But basically the gist is you put the adhesive in on and it's kind of milky and you let it dry and then it's sticky and then you press the gold leaf into the sticky stuff. And this little sponge applicator is from... Um, Oh, Cosmic Shimmer, oh, Creative Creative Expressions. I think Cosmic Shimmer is like, they have gold leaf too. And I have to say the gold leaf flakes worked better than the gold leaf sheets, um, but they both worked pretty well. And man, this is so messy. I had gold leaf everywhere. I can totally see why all the crafters are using foil now. And if you have foil, you can use it the same way. So if you have the the transfer, the full foil that will transfer with adhesive, um, the Heidi Swap foil, for instance, will work. You can do this with your foil and you won't have all the flaky, glittery stuff floating around your house. So just kind of keep that in mind. I will say though that the um, traditional metal leaf is more environmentally friendly as far as end, end user because you don't have those sheets of plastic. But uh, as far as ease of use and not wasting product, probably the more modern foils are a little bit better. But you can use whatever you have. Look in your stash. Maybe you picked up one of these products <laughs> in, the, uh, in the great foiling trend of uh, 2017 and they're kicking around. So now that the glue stick has dried on our little coffin of pumpkins here, I'm using an X-Acto knife to trim off the excess. Now I had to go back in and paint my pumpkins um, and I got a little paint on the vellum. So what you can do if you get paint on the vellum is you can use a Q-tip dipped in rubbing alcohol and you can wipe off the paint that you get on the vellum if you have to go back in and fix anything like I did. So I uh, just want to let you know. Actually, I don't think I've repainted these yet because they do look a little rough, <laughs> to be honest. First, I'm like, eh, maybe I can just do the paint pens and... Uh, <laughs> and make it make it look okay and i was like oh i really need some paint here i was so i was so mad let me tell you i was so mad so if you get real frustrated and you get all yosemite sam on your projects just know you're not alone i was wicked i was rooting tooting mad friends i was so mad so anyway ooh, i hate messing up my <laughs> craft projects <laughs> oh man but hey a bad day crafting is better than a day without crafts, don't you think? Um, though we're starting to look a little bit better here. Uh, again, my paints are still fresh on that palette. I think this is like 
maybe day three and these paints are still fresh so i'm totally psyched about that i'll uh, i'll link down to that palette as well if you're interested in that and i'm also using a little paint pen to uh, spruce up old frankie here and uh paint pens are great for this i like the parku brand um i really love posca pens but they're pricey posca pens are pricey so try parku instead <laughs> this is not an ad for parku i just happen to like their uh their paint pens are very affordable and um they really perform well so there's a lot of budget paint pens out there some some are good some are not um but i really like the parkus so once you've got your skeleton all dry time to put them back together so i lay them out on the table to make sure the feet and hands are going the right way and they will flip flop around when you put them together so don't worry about them too much um but you just go basically go back in and uh, put the rings through the holes and twist them shut again so when you open and close rings anytime you're doing jewelry anytime you're doing any home decor projects with jump rings you want to make sure you twist them see how i twist them like that you don't open them up like a u you want to twist them kind of like a c and then you won't have the bones falling off. You don't want to have things falling apart. Isn't that cute? I think that's so cute. And I just love how this came out. Oh my word. I just love it. I think that's so cute. Um, I Gold leaf is fun. I really need to use it more. So hopefully I will. And then instead of using it, trying to salvage those little bits of twine that came with them, which were kind of short, to be honest, I decided I would use red satin ribbon for the uh, classy cameo gal. And then I would just use some jute that I had, which I probably bought at the dollar store on the other ones. Oh, and you can get ribbon at the dollar store. They usually have a pretty good selection. Um, I'm using just off -ray narrow red ribbon that is from Joann's, I think. Um, I thought about putting actually a really big wide satin bow, a satin ribbon bow on her, but, um, but I didn't. I don't know. I still could. I could put it even on her hair or something. I don't know. I'll think about that. But, you know, please embellish it to however you see fit. Now, I did hang the pumpkins in the window, and they looked really pretty because when the light is behind them, they glow, and it looks like a silhouette. Um, and then it, when it's like all lit it just looks like that so it, it's really cute i really recommend giving this project a try and they have other ones that you could just put vellum paint black and put vellum behind it and they would be cute too so i hope you enjoyed this project i want to thank you so much for watching and i hope you give it a try thanks for watching until next time happy crafting